everyone. Welcome to Datatherm's next presentation on mobile and API security. This one is specifically going to be talking about how low-tech hackers hack your APIs in 15 minutes or less. So with that, let's get started. This is a little bit about Data Theorem. I will not be spending any time on this slide. If you have any questions um, on Data Theorem, Google search us. We've written a lot of books on security, started a lot of companies in, in security software. Uh, we've been around um, in the industry for 22 years, so lots of content out there if you're interested in who we are. Um, this is our products. Uh, we are specialists in modern application security, which includes mobile apps, iOS and Android, serverless apps, Lambda and Cloud Functions, uh, single page web apps, uh, of course, API security, and that all rotates around cloud storage. So if you have any questions about our products, also Google search us uh, later on. These is our, this is a list of our customers that we can uh, announce, uh, fancy fancy. I will not be uh, talking much about this, but if you're interested in references, we can provide that as well. All right, here we go. How low-tech hackers hack your APIs in 15 minutes or less? So. Before I begin, let me define the word low-tech. It sounds like a derogatory term, and you really don't want to use derogatory terms to hackers. It's not a good thing, believe me. However, it's actually a compliment, and let me talk about why that is. Um, first, let's talk about a very famous, very sophisticated, and very technical attack called Heartbleed. Um, if you don't know about it, Google search it. There's a link right there, but it's a work of art. Um, the people who found Heartbleed um, were uh, very technical, very sophisticated, and it was one of the most interesting um, issues that I came across, of, uh, across in my security career over the last 22 years. And the financial damage that Heartbleed caused was $500 million. So you can see that on the Wikipedia article as well. So $500 million on one issue. Um, so not only was it te technically sophisticated, it caused a lot of financial damage. Now, on the way other side of the spectrum, there is something called phishing. Phishing is not very technical. It's very low tech. It's very easy to pull off. You don't have to be Dan Bonet to pull off a phishing attack. You definitely have to be Dan Bonet to find the next Heartbleed attack or, or someone like him. But the point is phishing is very low tech. However, if you look at the financial damages that phishing causes, it's $500 million a year, not a one-time loss. So if you're talking about efficiency and ROI in terms of your hacking skills and your hacking time, you're better apt to go to phishing than finding the next Heartbleed. And there's our article on Forbes that actually talks about how it's a $500 million loss. So when you talk about hackers, true hackers are efficient. They make well, good use of their time because they're busy people. They have to go to school in the morning because they're probably young people and play video games and eat Cheetos, or if they're not young, they're probably working at the NSA. So I'm kind of being silly here, but a true hacker is an efficient person that uses their skills and their time wisely. Researchers, security researchers, will have more time. They maybe have a full-time pr profession doing this, but in terms of hacking, it's not low tech, it's just efficiency, and so that's why I wanted to explain why I said low tech, and this is gonna come into play later on in the presentation. So first, is this a real problem? There's a lot of hype in the security industry. Is this yet another vendor talking about something that we don't really need to worry about? Well, let's look at the data. So here on March 12th, 2019, there was a mobile app, um, an iOS app called 63 Red Safe. Uh, now what the app does is not important, but the point is, is that an attacker out there decompiled uh, the app found some APIs, which is, again, not a very technical or sophisticated thing to do. And within the APIs, because all mobile apps usually talk to some kind of RESTful API, there was an API that had no authentication. And because it had no authentication, the attacker was able to connect to it and basically get admin access. So not only was an API, it was an admin API that the attacker was able to identify, see it had no authentication, and get full access to the app's data. So obviously very bad for not only the users of the app, the, uh, the uh, developer of the app itself. Later on in the year, September 9th, 2019, in this situation there was an app in Australia, uh, also iOS and Android, uh, it was called Get, 
this app had a search API function. Unfortunately, the way the search API function was designed, it could be manipulated where an attacker could connect to it. Obviously, with a search, you want to be able to connect to it, but it could get access to all the database data, not just to what the uh, uh, single user should have access to. So this is an authorization bypass attack um, via the API. And because of the bypass, the attacker was able to get access to the name, email, date of birth, Facebook ID, phone numbers, on, and the list goes on and on. So 50,000 university students, were uh, their data was compromised because an API operation with an auth uh, bypass attack. And then and just a couple weeks later after that one, there was another mobile app called Heyo. Um, and this time it wasn't an API, it was an Elasticsearch database that unfortunately had no password. So an unauthenticated Elasticsearch database um, being used by the mobile app was identified by the attacker. The attacker just connected to it, saw there was no authentication, and bam, 72,000 users' data were compromised. So the list could go on and on. I could find mobile apps, decompile them, find low or no security on the APIs, connect to them, and, and connect the data. This is just three examples of what we identified in one calendar year. So let's talk about exactly how they did this, right? Because I want everyone to understand what is actually going on here and, uh, and, and how you can defend against this. So step one is you download a mobile app from the App Store. It can be the App Store itself from Apple or Google Play for Google, and you download that, and then you want to basically decrypt the app. Um, so we're going to demo that with an iOS app. This is not a technical step, it's very straightforward, but essentially you download an app from the App Store, everyone can do that, and you decrypt it. And we actually have a tool, if you want access to it, to decrypt it. It's not, it's not uh, I'm sure you could write your own, but if you want something um, cookie cutter, it's essentially a tool we wrote uh, for POC purposes. All right, so you can see the help menu from this tool. We're going to go ahead and just... Um, decrypt the iOS Amazon app and we just chose Amazon randomly um, nothing special about it so we got uh, the iOS app from the App Store as you can see from the right hand side and then on the left hand side we're using our tool called decrypt to essentially decrypt the application and get access to all its source files but more importantly for this demonstration it's um, APIs it's connecting to an API domain so we're really interested in what the app is connecting to server side and what RESTful APIs we can get a hold of. So this is a long list of them. Amazon's a quite a big, big app, so that's why you see a lot of files. But essentially at the end of this exercise, we have a decrypted app and then we're gonna go what we call API hunting to find the APIs uh, embedded within the Amazon iOS uh, mobile application. And that brings us to step two. Step two is basically we're going to use another tool, Data Therm Road, called API Hunter. We're going to point it at the decrypted Amazon iOS app, and we're going to start detecting APIs and domains in the source code itself. All right. So as you can see on the screen, we're using our API Hunter tool on the decrypted Amazon app. And essentially what you're going to see in bright green are server-side APIs that the Amazon app is connecting to. And dark green are things that we don't care about, so, uh, so you can just kind of ignore them. And at the end of this uh, process, you'll see basically a list of targets, um, attack surfaces, that we as the attacker can start trying to connect to um, uh, uh, to, to see if there's any exposed data. But, we're not going to connect to those APIs because remember I promised you uh, 15 minutes or less. So this is the science of the attacker or the hacker uh, where they're very efficient and in my opinion very intelligent. What they're going to do is basically take multiple copies of your app, one today and one maybe the previous release or release for a couple uh, months ago, and then going to perform a diff. They're going to essentially decompile both versions, the recent version and the one before that, and then they're going to identify what we call shadow APIs. These are new APIs that showed up in the latest release that were not there beforehand. And 
why they're doing that, if they're new in this release and they weren't there beforehand, there's a good likelihood that the security team doesn't know about them either. And the security team doesn't know about them, then maybe they're not secured. Maybe there's no authentication on the API or there's no authorization protection on the API. So this is how hackers use their time wisely and why they're successful in 15 minutes or less. They're not gonna attack all the APIs because more than likely security's already looked at half of those. Who has time for that? Look at the new APIs from the recent build and you can bet on the security team has not even known about them. Connect to those, see if you can get access to some data before anyone knows that it showed up. And that's what we're gonna demonstrate next. So in this tool called Shadow API Hunter, uh, very creative of us, but essentially when now we're hunting for shadow APIs. And again, a shadow API is gonna look at your old build um, and compare that to the new build. Um, and again, this is all public build, so we're not doing anything uh, for private access. And then everything in blue is the net new. And the net new is the shadow APIs. This is how we're gonna be successful in 15 minutes or less by targeting the net new APIs. And everything in green here, as you can see, is new. And this is what we're gonna go after in terms of connection points. And this is what attackers do on the internet. They're very clever and very smart. And now they not only reduce their attack surface, which is fine because the likelihood the security team didn't get access to this data is very high in large enterprises or even small enterprises. So that's what we're gonna start targeting next in terms of our shadow API testing. Which brings us to step three. Um, Step three is essentially inspecting the shadow APIs for authentication, for authorization, any encryption flaws, but basically authentication authorization. So if they are shadow and no one knows about them and security hasn't seen it, again, the, statistical, the statistically um, likelihood of an API being open on the internet is very high, as I showed you already by those three examples in the previous part of the presentation. All right, so back through the demo. So we have an inspect tool. And now, as you can see, uh, now this part, by the way, is not Amazon. Um, we would never throw uh, anyone under the bus. This is now a, a fake example. But anything with 200 OK, uh, don't worry about the details. Um, but essentially, anything uh, with 200 OK is where we were able to connect to one of the shadow APIs successfully. And everything in red, we were rejected. So you see what's going on here is essentially you not only de detected shadow APIs, now you're just connecting to them. And when you have a 200 OK, that means you connected successfully and now you can go see what data, if any, there is to extract from. Which is our final step in step four, which is extracting data from the APIs. And again, here's the syntax of how to do that. Again, this is not the real Amazon app. Um, this is a, this part of the demonstration is fake data, but let me go ahead and show you the demo of this as well. So in this demo, we're not using a data theorem tool. This is just a get request uh, used with curl, and we're just basically getting access to the data that the open API that we connected to in the previous step um, has access to. And you can see, um, First name, last name, username, password, password hash, and social security number were all accessible via this unauthenticated API. This is the same thing all three of those examples that I showed you earlier did. As you can see, this is the science of a sophisticated low-tech attack that's gonna be very successful. So the key part of that is, statistically speaking, it's gonna be very successful, which is why attackers are gonna do it because all we did is enumerate shadow APIs from your publicly accessible mobile apps, and then we try to connect to them using a typical GET request. When we connected to them, we started extracting data, and in this particular example, um, we, got, we got a lot of data. All right, so to recap, what did we do? We decrypted a publicly accessible mobile app from the App Store, then we hunted for APIs, and then we did a diff, that's the important part. The 15 minutes, we did a diff between the old version and the brand new version. And then when we got that diff, we got shadow APIs that we knew probably the security team doesn't know about. We connected to all of them, 
Some of them we were not successful, as we saw in red. Some of them we were successful with the 200 OK in green. And the ones we were success successful, we tried to extract data, and then bam, we got access to a lot of data with one of the open APIs. So what does that mean? So what if you're an attacker or hacker, what can you target? Well, there's millions of things to target. There's millions of open RESTful APIs or just APIs out there. Uh, obviously, 5 million mobile apps out there between the App Store and Google Play, single page web apps and serverless apps. There's really no amount of, uh, of um, there's a large amount of attack services with APIs. You can find them in mobile apps like these, uh, these example I showed you or just any APIs but the way to find them quickly is with shadow API access. So this idea that I explained to you, this 15 minutes or less, is nothing new. It's been used uh, a while by security people like myself. And one example I'd like to talk about is like Windows desktop security from a long time ago, uh, from the 90s. And so what would happen is Windows would come out with a service pack, um, basically an update to its operating system. And as an attacker, what you do is you look at the service pack and you look at all the changes in the service pack. Um, and those changes usually have security changes. So you basically decompile the service pack library, uh, find all the changes, see what they change in terms of security, and then, then you know where the exploit was or where the security vulnerability was in the main operating system because you found it in the service pack. And by the way, the service pack is a lot smaller in terms of library in versus the operating system. So when you find the security vulnerability in a service pack, the strong hackers back in the day would write a worm for the main operating system and let that worm loose on the internet. And the reason why it was so effective because people didn't update their operating system very quickly, and so people who had outdated operating systems were essentially vulnerable. Um, this same technique is also used in Pwn to Own. You find a WebKit issue in September, you sit on it till the, till the Pwn to Own competition later, um, uh, later in the following year, and you basically uh, hack whatever device you want to hack um, within seconds, not because you're a genius, you're obviously very intelligent, but be, you've been sitting on an issue for quite some time. So that's the way smart, intelligent, efficient hackers make use of their time is uh, they look for things in terms of security gaps or just a high success of compromise um, by using this technique that I talked about um, in the presentation itself. All right, so how do you fix this? What is the solution? Um, so the solution sounds quite simple, and it is. It's pretty hard to implement. So the thing is you need to detect and inspect your shadow assets whether that's an API, a storage um, asset, a serverless app, a single page at, um, web app, you need to detect shadow aspect, uh, assets. Now, shadow IT is the same idea, but I'm not talking about um, IT assets, I'm talking about application assets. APIs, serverless, SPAs, you need to detect them. And then when you detect them, of course, you need to inspect them for security. Is it authenticated? Are authorization parameters secured? and is it encrypted correctly? So this is what you need to do. Um, now, again, this is a product push, so take this with a grain of salt. This is what Data Theorem does. I will not speak heavily on this, but if you're interested, that is something that we do and we specialize. But more importantly, these shadow assets, anything net new, whether it's our product or your own tooling, this part of the product that I'm highlighting can be uh, done for free, but more importantly is the important part. What showed up? in the last 30 days that I as the security person didn't know about. Even if it's not sensitive, I need to know about it, I need to inventory it, and if it's sensitive, I need to inspect it for authentication, authorization, and encryption. So you need to have a detection system that's always on, um, that's looking for shadow assets within your application infrastructure. And that's about it. Um, if you have any questions um, for us, you can email API World. This is where we did the presentation for the first time. Um, if not, um, you can in email us at info at datatherm.com. And uh, I thank you for your time and a good rest of your day.